Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome SUSE Senior Product Manager, Joe Werner. Good morning. I brought my little friend with me. Good morning in sunny Salt Lake City. I want to tell you a bit about what SUSE can do for you to start with. We were the ones who basically invented Enterprise Linux way back on the IBM mainframe with SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, which is now in release 12 service pack one. So you can say we, we know how to do Enterprise Linux, especially on highly mission critical platforms like SAP. You know SAP's slogan, the best run businesses run SAP. What we can proudly say is, yes, and SAP runs their SAP on SUSE. And most of the sub-HANA in memory databases, for example, are exclusively running on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP applications. As I mentioned, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server started off on the mainframe, and we are still the choice for running Linux on the mainframe. But it goes beyond just Linux. We want to have you make the idea of a fully software-defined data center a reality. A data center where you basically run your workloads in your own private OpenStack cloud. The product we have for that is SUSE OpenStack Cloud. Again, we were first to package up those OpenStack project packages into a distribution to be used in the enterprise with the support you need. It's the easiest to install OpenStack, and we've been winning uh, a prize for the fastest installation at OpenStack Summit year after year. We also have tools for helping you um, with your software-defined storage. Just recently, we added our Ceph-based SUSE Enterprise storage solution um, to the game. And of course, SUSE is a great workload to run in public clouds as well. But we also want to address the needs of the developers who actually build those workloads for the cloud or for your data centers with cool tools like our SUSE Studio, which is available for use on site as a packaged product, but also as an online service at susestudio.com. You can always give it a try, you can build your own Linux and run it in all different platforms, VMware, installation media, and so on. And for the ones of you who actually build software on their own, we have the open build service. This is the technology behind our own build infrastructure, our own continuous integration infrastructure, and we are sharing it with the community, with the OpenSUSE community, but also a lot of other open source projects. So it's not just for SUSE, it builds other packages. As you can see, we have all those different targets there. The OpenSUSE tools ecosystem is really great. It's a distribution that's really focusing on helping the community with great tools. Kiwi is the build tool that's behind both SUSE Studio and the part in um, open build service that actually builds media. We've got the open build service itself. Again, you can also run this in your own continuous integration um, at home or in your enterprise. And finally, our latest addition to the mix is OpenQA. It's a QA framework that allows you to run a video after you've done an installation and see all your bugs in the video with links to the logs. It's a really great tool, and it's now being used not just by SUSE, but also by the Fedora project. So that's our great lineup of tools. Now let's get into a little demo. For that, I'm welcoming uh, to the stage Don Wasberg, a senior sales engineer from our US team. Welcome, Don. <laughs> ah, here he is. Don Wasberg, also known as the guy who does stuff. It's a reorg proof title. That's right. <clears throat> And that's no joke, their, their official title has been changing like every second year or so. So, Don, have I missed anything? Uh, you left out one important thing, Joe. What about SUSE Manager? You're right. I mean, Aren't you the product manager 
of yes. system manager? Yes. How could you forget that? My Come bad. On, man. Well, I mentioned it in the intro, but then I basically forgot about it later. Um, SUSE Manager um, is, of course, my pet project. That's, that's the product I love most. We've introduced it a couple of, uh, of years ago, five years ago, I five. think. Five. Yeah, and it's a, a, one of our fastest growing products. And the cool thing is now it comes with SALT built in. And that's why we are here at SALTConf. SUSE Manager is addressing the whole life cycle of your IT management, managing your OS and your applications from onboarding the hardware, asset management, keeping track of everything, to provisioning, package management, through configuration management, and that's of course what we are going to focus on today, and redeploying workloads um, on the hardware once the life cycle um, has reached its end. Um, there are a lot of marketing messages for that, but I like this one most, just tame IT with SUSE Manager. That's really describing very well what SUSE Manager um, can do for you. Okay, what's going on? What the heck? Oh, that's mine, sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah? Don't you know you weren't supposed to answer that during the yep, keynote? Yeah, but it's important. Sorry, don't, don't interrupt me. It, it's Nuremberg. It's, it's our headquarters. Um, it's the engineering team. Okay, 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 okay. Good. Okay, we, 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 we'll find a way of handling that. Okay, it's another sorry. bug? Yep. No, it's not another bug. Actually, it's good news. They just told me that they are shipping in time. They're shipping today. The problem is I told marketing that they will never make the deadline. So we haven't prepared the, the launch page, the, the website. Oh, no. So, Don... I'm so sorry. Let's forget about all the demo you prepared. We have to do this now. Okay, great. There's no, no other way. I'll get to show off all of my skills, my awesome HTML skills. <laughs> yeah. There's one good you news. <laughs> There's, you know, I've, I've prepared something. I oh, mean, we are, at a, okay, we are at a SALT conference, so I've prepared a few states for you, so it, it's, it's going to be rather easy. Uh, the setup we are looking at is going to be really cool. So let me just briefly tell you how this is going to work. So SUSE Manager 3 is a SALT master now, so all the communication um, to the client and back is using SALT, and, and that's what we are going to leverage today. Um, the reason why we've picked SALT is threefold. First of all, we have customers with thousands of managed uh, devices. Um, the largest account we're working with is aiming to manage 100,000 systems, of course not with a single server, but in a kind of unified architecture. And um, our current technology just didn't um, get us there anymore. So we were looking for mega scale. Uh, we wanted to please... Parallelize. Parallelize. Yeah, it's a word that's very hard to, to say for a German. Um, <laughs> tasks should be executed in a short time. So some customers have like a one hour or two hour window for their patches every three, three months or so. And that's what we have to, uh, to match. And we want, to, want it to be very expressive, not just verbally, but we want it to be able to declare system definitions uh, in, a, in, a, in a declarative way, rather than just running scripts and executing tasks. Um, SALT gives us all of that. We had a, a little problem because SALT was written in Python and the core of SUSE Manager was Java. And that was the first community contribution that we made. Um, the guy who's written the Java SALT API client is in the room today, Johannes Renner. He's here. Where is he? Johannes. He's in the third Stand row up. over there. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is, this is what I have in mind, Don. I, I need to have a scalable solution. So we need a web server, obviously. We want to make sure that we can handle all the downloads. So we want a media server with okay. all the video images and so on separately. And of course, that means we also need a load balancer. And later, we can add other servers because we have the load balancer. Um, sure, because we're expecting a lot of traffic. Right? Absolutely, yeah. especially after that announcement. But don't be scared. As I said, the states are all prepared for you. I can't be too scared. I've yeah. got my stuffed animal. <laughs> so we will start with what we call a just enough operating system. That's our uh, minimal SUSE. 
Um, and on top of that, we are just going to run solid states to install the other stuff and to add um, configuration, of course, and uh, also all the Apache, you know, the images and all that stuff. Um, of course, those images, um, you could also use SUSE Studio, and that's what we are doing, to add the salt minion right into your image, so when it starts up, it's basically uh, fully prepared. Yeah, cool. That's really cool. Um, I'm giving away something. So <laughs> let's now switch to Don's demo, and he'll uh, run you through a few things. Basically, okay. as I've mentioned, we have those choose images. Now, what, what, what are you doing with them? Well, I created a, a web server and a, and a load balancer because we're going to need it, right? Absolutely. So I've uh, started them up, and they're running the salt minion, and they're talking to the SUSE manager, which is set up as the master server. So I have to accept the keys first, right? So they actually, uh, a communication gets accepted between the two. And then they go into my list. What we've done in onboarding these things is create a grains file that actually directs them to an activation key. So they get assigned to a group and they get assigned to uh, software-based channels and child channels that allow it to get the right updates for that distribution. Now, Don, um, do you see this lamp? Oh, why is that on? I probably should fix that, huh? Where does it come from? Oh, another one's lighting up. What's okay. up with that? Yeah, that's, that that's means the my magic. VMs are actually uh, coming online, right? Hopefully. And hopefully I haven't done anything too bad to uh, make them get ruined. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so, so what, we're clear What's now. happening here is we are using those Philips Hue lights, and we are controlling them through salt. And that's all real. It's, it's no joke. It's, it's a real demo with the it's lights. It's no joke. <laughs> So, we I actually, love you too, man. This we is actually great. Even, even have a note here that says proxy one. That's our proxy minion for the lamps. Yeah, so you'll notice in my list of servers, I have some that I'm not showing today that even are other operating systems. So, if you want to manage those with SUSE Manager, you can, but it's outside of our demo purview. We can talk about some of that if you come to our session later. So, here's my uh, web server. And I have a balancer, too. So um, you told me you created some states for these. How am I supposed to apply those states? Well, um, can we quickly change to the presentation, please? And I'll guide the guys through this whole thing. So what happens, obviously, SUSE Manager is the salt master. Um, it, it will send um, states to the event bus um, that choose image will get a state applied, and I'll show you in a minute how we actually do that. Um, so it becomes a web server, and the event bus also has uh, a proxy minion listening that is triggered through a reactor. Not that kind of reactor, but a salt reactor, um, and that's what actually drives our lamps. So um, we can so, go back to the demo, please, now. All right, so I have a load balancer, and uh, what we've done is created system groups. This is a normal construct inside of SUSE Manager, but we're, we're uh, conjoining that with the functionality of SALT and its states. So if I look at the load balancer group, I have a state here called ba load balancer that does a number of things, but I don't have any systems in there yet, so we're going to add our balancer. So I click on my balancer and tell him to be a part of that group. So now he's added. If I look at the state, I can actually view it here by, by clicking that. And, and it does several things. It makes sure that uh, a package is installed. That's our load balancer. And the configuration for that becomes a managed file that's served off of the SUSE manager server. And then I turn on the service, and like all good IT administration, guys, I make sure the firewall's turned off. Yeah. So if you're using Red Hat, of course, add the other one that says SE Linux off. Yeah. So all I have to do Don't here is apply the guys. state, right? So I'm going to apply it to all the systems in the group. Just like anything else in SUSE Manager, it goes through the scheduler. Uh, and unlike some of the traditional SUSE Manager things, 
it goes so fast, I don't get to see it in pending. I get to look at it as a completed action, and it applies the states, and then the balancer I see has his state applied to him. So now my load balancer is running. That's really cool. So I should be able to get to him with my web browser, don't you think, Joe? Yeah, let's have a look. So uh, each of these states that we're going to be applying today, the one for the balancer, and one for the web server, and the ones for the media, he created them, right? I just copied them into my SUSE manager system, so I hope they work. Yeah. You, you can Especially blame me after how late we yeah. stayed up last night trying so how to does look this, at this, the right? Website, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. It says the service is not available. Yeah. What it's did like, I forget? It's actually not bad, on because that's just the message from the low balancer that we don't have any backends yet. So oh, it's an error, okay. but it's an expected one. Okay, now so I, yeah, I powered on the web server, but I didn't make it part of the group, did I? So, okay, so I'm going to go to the system groups for web server, and we're going to add this guy to it. The target system shows all the ones that aren't part of this group right now, so if he was already in there, he'd be assigned. So I'm going to assign him and add him. And now I get to apply the state much like I did before. So I'm going to apply my web server state. Let's see what happens. Whoa, whoa, some more light action. This is kind of cool. So my web server is up. And now, uh, now should I try to go see what, what it looks like in the, in the web browser? Yes, yes, sure. See, see if the content is there, the, the really awesome content that uh, I'm hoping for. You'll be proud of my right? HTML skills. Yes! This yeah. is it. Yeah. Yeah. This is like yeah. this goes with your trucker hat. So, so we've got we, we've got our um, basically my boss in the room. So Michael, what do you think about that? It's probably not what you expect. Yeah. Very it's impressive. very impressive. Yeah. yeah I, I like, like the, the colors. It's like 80s, and yeah. it, it, it fits into yesterday's party, um, kind of the, the theme. But now we have to fix that, of course. It might be good if we had some graphics maybe to go yeah. in this page, don't so, you think? I guess the problem is, of course, we don't have a media server up. So let's, oh, let's just shoot. add a media Crap. server. Okay. And so. guys, again, this is all real. We are applying the states in real time. You it's, have to convince them that it's real, right? So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of scary, ain't it? <laughs> no, I just want to put some more pressure yeah, on Yeah, it's so real that I forgot to turn on my media server, so I'm going to start him up here. So he's... <laughs> Hopefully my media server will show up. So with these uh, salt things, we've done things we never could do before with SUSE Manager. SUSE Manager is based on the, the open source project Spacewalk. So any of you who might be familiar with that or with Red Hat Satellite Server 5 and previous, uh, a lot of this web UI has been enterprise tested for a long time. Some of it is, is going to get a lot of nice changes, but we've already refreshed it with a bunch of cool functionality. We'll get to show some of that at today's session. So hopefully my machine is going to be here. I'm going to refresh. Yeah, there he is. Okay. So here's the media server, and I'm going to onboard that guy. So now everybody's up. Right? 10. Yeah. There. That's better. More lights. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, wow. That's kind of so cool. So blue means that you haven't applied the Sort of unexpected, right? but kind of cool, right? So here's my server itself. In, inside the view of this server, um, you can see a number of things about it um, that get taken at the time when it comes up. And he's still refreshing, so um, it will tell you uh, what the host name is, IP address. Uh, it will tell you, it will assign channels and a bunch of other things. But what it doesn't do is make my media server a member of the media server group. So I'm going to get to do that. I'm going to join him here. And I don't, I'm going to pick my media server group, just like we did with the web server. And now let's look at the states that are in that media server group. Make sure we're pointing at the right state here. Yeah, okay, so there it says media. That, that's good, right? So let's, let's apply this thing and uh, see what happens. So, whoa, whoa, some One other. More. Okay, so it's turning orange here. What the heck's up with that? Um, yeah. Is it supposed to? Let's, let's just check for the website first, because I want to see the website with the pictures, please. 
Okay, okay, so we're pretty sure that the pictures are gonna be better than this, right? Hey, there look at that! That's cool. The porcupine but, with the curlers. But, but, do, but I'm pretty don't. sure after this guy uses them, you don't yeah. want to. So we're kind of running out of time and that's the wrong image, so we have to fix that. It's, it's, I like it, I like it, but of course for the launch we've prepared something Didn't else. Didn't you create these states, buddy? You're right. Okay, but I think you took the wrong one. I, I had a, another one that said media and it had launch in the name. Oh, okay. I think that's the one. That's so, the one yeah, so I have a state catalog here. You think I can search through it and try to find the right one? I'm going to search for media this time. Oh, now, wait a minute. There we go. Okay, that's the problem. That's it. So and whose meantime, problem was that, yours or mine? Just let me briefly explain what happened with the red light. So that's when Don did something that he wasn't supposed to do. And... That's when a beacon fired that is watching a file on the machine and we get a red alert. We can't well, maybe I wasn't, you know, maybe, maybe your group thing wasn't right. Maybe I just need to change something on the server, you know. Uh, you think I should edit something? So um, I'm going to go on this media server. Hopefully, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, hang on just a second. This is a live demo, just as a reminder. So 106, okay, so let's go to air. How fast can you type in front of 500 people? Yeah. There you should we go. have a salt state for that. <laughs> oh, stop. I know everyone here hates SSH, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm on my Media One server. Um, actually, I should be able to edit a file well, what is it that gets pushed out to this guy? Uh, remember, we were looking at our state, and, uh, and we, we weren't sure uh, what files got pushed out. So if I look at the media one, that I, the state that I pushed out, I see I'm pushing out this file that has really important content. It's called, yeah. So I'm going to try to edit the important content and see if I can fix this thing. Uh, let's see if I edit it. There it is, important content. It says this is really important and do not delete. So I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit and say this is not really important and do not delete. And then when I save the file, um, the file watcher creates an event inside of SUSE Manager. Now, if it doesn't work, we're also going to do system, we're gonna restart the minion because I can hear Johannes telling me to restart the, the, the menu. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so just uh, maybe can we, can, can we go back to the slides for a moment, to the presentation? So this is what's happening here. The media server um, is sending, sorry, the media server is sending an alert and it goes to the message bus and again, uh, the reactor would pick it up and uh, the lights um, change. Okie doke. Now, there's one last thing. Um, of course, with the setup we have now, it's very easy to just add additional web servers and media servers. And again, um, we can use the reactor um, to just add those nodes to the load balancers configuration automatically. So that's what the salt uh, stack guys call um, predictive orchestration. Um, that's, that's, that's really cool. Um, I think we are kind of out of time. Okay, so John. we're gonna. We're so is gonna, there anything you want to? We're gonna push our uh, push our final m media and get this thing fixed, right? <laughs> and can you just you know light up all the lights one more time? That would be I cool. I can. So this is a salt state that is called have fun. <laughs> okay, thank you for your attention. That was our Susie keynote.